Smoked stuffed peppers. Very easy. No pre-cooking the meat, no steaming the peppers. Let me show you how. And here we have some beautiful peppers. I'm gonna wash them with my veggie soap. I'll show you how I do it. So the color one, I always put the soapy water in. The white one, I always rinse, and then this can go back out in the garden. You want ones that are gonna stand up in the smoker, just like that, perfect. So this is our all natural, vegan friendly, veggie wash soap that we make and have made for the last almost three decades. Just put a little on your brush, you wet your produce, and this is gonna be more than enough. This is designated for food. I rinse in the first bucket and then in the final bucket. So again, did you know three bumps on the bottom of the pepper is male and four or more are female? And that's it. I'm gonna hang the soap back up to dry. No soap. Listen, I didn't even really rinse it. Can you hear that? No soap residue, no flavor, no anything. All natural. So these are washed. I'm gonna pat them dry. I'm gonna place them in the refrigerator until the smoker hits around 275 to 300 because I put my meat in raw. I add all my ingredients raw. I don't pre-cook the meat and I don't pre-cook the peppers. So I'm just going doing all the prep work while the smoker's hitting 275 to 300, and then we'll be back. Once you have a smoked pepper, you'll never wanna go back to the oven type ever again, trust me. And I'm gonna do a little one, for like a little popper. I normally don't wash ours, but we've had a lot of birds in the garden, and I don't wanna take a chance. There you go. And now I'm going to discuss how and what we soak our chips in. Let's head on over. And here is the key to a good smoker, is your chips. Our chips have been soaking about eight hours in a bourbon moonshine. It's about 80 proof, and we are using Jack Daniel chips. Love, love them. It also makes a good bourbon if you have plain moonshine. So what we do not use, this liquid will not go to waste. The liquid will be put back into the bourbon bottle, and it's perfectly fine to drink. So no moonshine is wasted. Same thing with the chips. If we do not need all these chips, the chips will be reused in plain moonshine to make bourbon. We have the smoker lit. We're using an electric one today, so we can put these in right away. What I'm going to do, I'm gonna drain the rest of the liquid into this bowl. This bowl is gonna go inside the smoker. It's gonna give it its little moisture, and then all the chips are gonna go in there with the lid. And these go right in here. Now we're smoking quite a bit of meat. We're smoking venison, all natural hot dogs, chicken breast with the bone and skin, flat iron steaks. So we're gonna need a lot of chips. All right, this is gonna go in the bottom and this is going in the bottom of the smoker. And we're gonna use ground bison. I don't pre-cook this. I'm gonna mix everything in a bowl and then we're gonna stuff the peppers. I'm gonna show you two different ways how I stuff them for the smoker. Need one egg. I'm gonna pre-crack it to make sure nothing's wrong with it. Save your eggshells. I have a whole blog post on what you could do with eggshells. You can get creative, add any spices you want. I basically use the same thing every time I cook. I use the blood and all. I put everything in there, I don't waste anything. Salt and pepper to taste. As usual, red meat, dash of liquid smoke. As usual, red meat, bone beef broth, probably about a tablespoon of each. And homemade gram masala, you can go to the blog, I'll leave the link up and below. You can print out this recipe and make your own. Last over a year, I don't measure. Really adds a nice little kick, a little bite. And I made a lot of extra rice. And the reason I'm gonna show you at the end of the video, you'll have to stay tuned what I do with stuffed peppers for leftovers. Now before I get my hands dirty, I'm going to cut the peppers. For this pepper, I'm gonna cut it this way. And two halves. This way it's a lot easier for me to eat because I only eat a half a pepper at a time. If you're a crafter like I am, save those and dry them out. They make great pumpkin and doll heads. So this one I'm gonna fill the cavity and I'm gonna lay it in the smoker like that. I cut the top off and I put it back on the pepper uh, and take it off 
during cooking so the meat doesn't dry out. Now, as with all ground meat, no matter what it is, you do not want to overhandle it. I'm gonna put in about, I don't measure, I gauge it. I can really tell. If you like stuffed peppers, you might like stuffed cabbage. Look up there. I just did a video just the other day on stuffed cabbage. By not pre-steaming the peppers, the peppers are going to be a lot more crisp when they are finished. And that's the way Ray likes it. He will not eat a soggy pepper. So especially with reheating these, these two more times, the pepper will stay very crisp. What I love about bison, and especially with the meat being raw, very little fat. Now what I used to do when I used ground beef, I would poke four little holes in this and when I baked it in the oven, and most of the fat and grease would come out the bottom. I put it like that, and then if I have more, I can go back. And it all depends how large your peppers are. You can get anywhere between four and six peppers out of, out of this. These are great, these are like little poppers. It will shrink down a little bit. We're gonna put these in a 250, 275, even 300 smoker. And in about 45, 50 minutes, we're gonna check them. The last five minutes, it's up to you. We like to take them out and put a piece of pepper jack cheese on top. Only the ones that we're eating immediately. I don't put pepper jack cheese on it if we're gonna put them in the refrigerator for leftovers. So these are gonna go right on the grill in the smoker. Now while I have the smoker going, I always take the opportunity to smoke some marinara. This was tomatoes that I had in the freezer. I put frozen tomatoes with a little bit of filtered water in the pressure canner, about 14, 15 minutes. Let it naturally release. Then I put it in the Vitamixer and then I hit it with my hand grinder mill. And then I freeze them in canning jars. No canning needed. The cast iron pan. I'm not going to add any liquid to it. It's going to boil down. This is straight tomatoes, all different varieties from last or last summer. If for some reason this was too watery, I would tighten it up with this, about a tablespoon or two. It thickens it beautiful. It's really good. I am addicted to this tomato powder. I never buy tomato paste anymore since I found this. And I'm just gonna throw a little bit of gram masala in there. Here it's all full. So what I'm gonna do in about a half hour, I'm gonna take the lids off. The marinara is back there in the, in the white cast iron. And then I will coat it and let it cook a little longer. And if it starts getting out dried out, I'll put the lids back on. But I put it on very top. I didn't want the chicken blood or anything else getting in it. So this might take longer than 50 minutes, but we're in no hurry. I like to keep them on the porcelain tray. Sometimes it sticks to this and it makes a mess. And I don't cook with foil, so the porcelain tray is perfect. I'm gonna put a little water on the tray so it actually steams it as it's cooking it. Go ahead, Ray, could you put a little water on there, please? And that's perfect. We'll probably keep that amount of water the whole time on the tray. It will steam it. I want to cut, shut this door so I can get the smoke going again. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. And here are some of our friends. It's Mama and her twins, and they always come up to visit. And here we are about 25 minutes in. I decided to put a little marinara, on the smoked marinara down there on those. And in about 10 minutes, I'm gonna take the lids off of the three peppers and put marinara on them. And if they start look like they're drying out, I will put the tops back on. Okay, and we are back. It took a little over an hour because we started it on the very top shelf. As we moved the chicken and the steaks, we moved it down. We took an internal temperature, like I always do. It's 165 degrees, it's done. I added the marinara halfway through so that it wouldn't dry out. And these freeze really well. This is what we use. This is a food grade waxing bag that we wrap our soaps in. I'll put this right in it and then I'll wrap it on the GAN with um, aluminum foil and then put it in the freezer. Freezes really well. We're not gonna eat, it is nine, a little after nine tonight. So we're gonna heat these up tomorrow and then put the cheese on it. And then the next day, I'll probably take the largest one, remove the pepper, dice it really small, 
take the meat and break it up add it to the leftover rice and add that smoked sauce and we have Spanish rice in a meal. It'll be perfect, just enough for the two of us. It's not mushy, beautiful, very tender. Now Ray and I like to eat ours with mashed potatoes. As you can see, the meat is fully cooked. It's not soggy. I can cut it with a fork. I don't even need a knife. Beautiful, it smells so good. So tomorrow we'll, we'll put uh, pepper jack cheese and reheat it with mashed potatoes with the sauce over it and our buttermilk rolls. And here is our beautiful buttermilk rolls. The dough was made in the bread machine. Look up there. I have the link and I'll leave the link below. You can go to the blog and print it out. How easy and beautiful. I like them because they're like a pull apart. I put about a quarter cup of the cooked down tomatoes in the bottom before I reheated it. And it still crunches a little bit when I cut into it. But look how nice it still holds together but falls apart. Beautiful. I hope you enjoy. This is Jersey saying have a good day. Please subscribe right now. Hit that bell, all notification, and see you on the next video.